Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, my name's James. I just wanted to do a quick introduction video on my 2020 Yamaha MT-10 SP. Um, I've had the MT-10 SP for around two months now, so I just kind of wanted to give a few loose first impressions about the bike, uh, explain a little bit about what I've, what I've done to it, what I want to do to it, um, and I guess a bit about why I bought it. I know that the MT-10s are quite a popular bike with very good reason, um, but we'll go through a bit about why I, I made my decision and, and how I feel about that, I guess. Um, we'll start off with the good about the MT-10. Um, first and foremost, the 1000cc engine, it's running roughly 155 to 160 horsepower at the wheel, which is just astronomical. It's the same engine that comes out of the Yamaha R1M and puts out an incredible amount of power, roughly 111 newton meters of torque. You've got power pretty much the whole way through the rev range, which makes it a terrific bike to ride, whether you're commuting in traffic or you're up in the twisties. However you're riding the bike, you've got readily available power whenever you need it. Um, the sound of the MT-10 is also incredible, even with the stock can on, so the, the big factory exhaust that hangs off the back of the bike, it has an incredible tone to it. Like. I'd, I've never owned a bike with a stock exhaust that I've enjoyed the sound of so much. Um, granted, I've put the uh, Acura TI onto mine uh, just to give it a li little bit more aggression, a little bit more volume, but the, the, the sound of that, that engine is just, oh, it's to die for. Um, the reason I went with the SP, the TFT display on the SP is absolutely friggin' incredible. Um, it's got everything that I could possibly need on it. It's nice and easy to flick through the modes, to adjust your suspension on the fly, do all of that sort of stuff. Um, it's got the day and night modes, it's got track mode with the lap timer and all of that sort of stuff. It's, it's just filled with good features. Um, the electronic adaptive suspension, uh, I've noticed this a fair bit riding in the hills. Um, the faster you go, effectively the stiffer the bike gets. So depending on the surface of the road that you're riding on, the the suspension is going to behave differently, uh, which is, look, a far cry from the 2016 MT-09 that I had previously that only had ABS as an option extra. Um, having, yeah, suspension that works with the road surface and your velocity is such an incredible feeling. Um, and on that, I guess the electronics package as a whole that comes with the MT-10 SP. So you've got the traction control, the quick shifter, uh, all the different modes that you can set, the track settings for the bike, um, the memory options for the suspension. And I think, I'm, I, I haven't, I, don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure the MT-10 comes with, I guess, an element of anti-wheelie within the traction control. So traction control off or traction control one will let you pick the front wheel up as much as you kind of want to. Whereas traction control two will effectively let you get maybe a meter up in the air. So nothing too crazy, enough that the bars are loose and you you feel like you're gonna fall off of the back of the bike, but nothing too, too crazy. And I haven't picked the front wheel up in traction control three. So while on paper, the bike doesn't come with anti-wheelie, uh, the traction control on, on the MT-10 kind of influenced that in a, I guess a soft way. Um, from the good, there's obviously a couple of drawbacks with the with the MT-10. Um, the fuel economy is pretty average. Uh, I've, I've read and watched a lot of lot of videos and documentation on the MT-10, and almost everyone mentions how bad the fuel economy is. I don't have an issue with it. I didn't buy the MT-10 to to have a fuel efficient bike. I bought it because it's got an R1M derived engine. It's it's a friggin' powerhouse, and I didn't buy it to ride it slowly and to have that power, you're, you're obviously going to start chewing through fuel. Um, that said, uh, according, to, according to the display, I am running more economically with the MT-10 SP than I was with my MT-09. My MT-09 did have the ECU flashed um, and a full Acura system, so that may uh, play a part in that, but it was also down at what, 150 cc's or something like that over the MT-10. Um, the seat gets a little bit of uncomfortable after a couple of days of riding. So there's been a couple of clear weekends lately where I've been out for probably four or five hours each day of the weekend. 
and towards the end of the second day I find that I'm starting to get a little bit sore and having to adjust my position on the bike quite a bit. Again, compared to the MT-09, it is a significant upgrade and I don't have too much of an issue with it. However, I will be looking at touring on the MT-10, so I'll be looking at getting a comfort seat or something similar just to cushion my cushioning, I guess. Um, the bar positioning on the MT-10, I'm not a big fan of. It kind of sits you pretty upright. I will be installing some uh, lower, wider bars, so probably the Renthal Fat Boys or something similar to that. Um, not only because of the silver color, but um, I just think the positioning of the bars could, I guess it leaves a little to be desired. I want a bit more, I want to feel a bit more like I'm riding the bike, not sort of sitting on top of it, I guess. The other thing I noticed, I had a friend of mine take mine for a ride um, yesterday or the day before, and off the bike, the thing is astronomically loud. It makes a bucket load of noise with the Acura TI system. Uh, this doesn't bother me. As the rider, it's pretty good. Um, it's not overly loud when you're sitting on the bike. Um, the Acura TI is incredible. It sounds amazing. Um, especially kicking through the quick shifter and it, it is it is really loud off the bike I, I'll try and get some footage um, of a flyby or something like that so just to see if we can get a bit of that experience but again I'm on the bike it doesn't really bother me all that much uh, I've done a few modifications to the the tent since I got it so I've done bar end mirrors tail tidy the Acura slip on and link pipe which I was talking about I've chucked the RNG crash protection and pillion blanking plates on um, and just on stomp grips and tank pads. So nothing too major just yet. I was looking at getting the ECU flashed and had Joel from Mototune come around to my place over the weekend. Uh, we stripped down the bike and unfortunately my MT-10 is uh, a, a new, new ECU. So October last year, uh, they evidently updated the ECU. So Woolwich haven't actually released the, the mapping for it yet um, so the tune needs to be built we need to need to get that all sorted so I'm currently looking up um, between sending it off to Woolwich to have uh, them do whatever witchcraft they need to do um, or just waiting till someone someone does do do the Woolwich tune it will happen inevitably it's a pretty common thing um, and I'll probably look at getting it on the dyno as well sometime next year um, and probably a Givy screen so I spent a little bit of time looking at screens, and to be honest, a lot of the screens for the MT-10 are really, really ugly. Uh, the Gibby screen gives it a nice, subtle, understated look. It's probably something I'd run all year round, to be honest. It's not something I'd chuck on just for touring. Um, like a lot of my gear, I've got a Krieger set up, so I've got the, the 20 liter and the 10 liter, I think it is, um, with the 30 liter backpack. I only ever run the 10 liter bag on the tail around town. Um, and even then, that doesn't happen all that often, but the Gibby screen, I'll probably leave on pretty much all the time, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so I'm sure I'll find more things that I'll, I'll do to the MT-10. I love messing around with bikes and sort of giving them that bit of personalization and making them mine. Um, I don't want my bike to look exactly the same as everyone else's, and I like a little bit of uniqueness to a point. I also think manufacturers do a fantastic job of building and designing their bikes so you don't want to stray too far from what they've done. I guess moving on to why I bought the MT-10. Um, I bought it for, for three reasons. So I, this is my everything bike. This is going to be my day-to-day, week-to-week. Um, I'm going to be commuting on the bike. It's got plenty of pep for it. It's pretty comfortable. Um, it, granted, it's not the best commute bike. It's a thousand cc. It's got a bit of weight to it, but I've got to do it anyway. People commute on Sicilia bikes, so um, I guess the downfall's got to be the fuel economy, but you know, whatever. Um, I got it for touring, so I've done a few interstate trips down to Phillip Island for the MotoGP uh, and up and down sort of Mount Hotham and uh, Falls and all of that sort of thing. The MT09 that I previously toured on really got pushed around with the wind. Uh, the exhaust on it was pretty droney when you were sitting at 110. Um, the MT-10 doesn't have that as much. Um, it's a comfortable bike. It's got a presence on the road, so the wind's not going to send you from one side of the road to the other or anything like that. It's got the get-up-and-go to get past anything else on the road, the trucks or anything like that. And it's also got a fair bit of space for gear. You've got the bolts for panniers and all that sort of thing, which you do on the MT-09 as well. 
Um, but the MT-10's just got a bit more resonance for that sort of stuff. The other big selling point of the MT-10, particularly the SP for me, was the electronics package. So the Olin's uh, front and rear suspension with the adjustable modes. Um, I can adjust everything on the fly. I can sort of do a 20 minute session, come back in. I haven't actually done a track day yet. My first one's about a month from now. Um, but I can do everything that I need to on the fly, essentially. The power, the 1000cc engine is incredible. It's gonna be incredible on the track. It's so easy to throw the bike around as well. I think the only time it may struggle a little bit is gonna be sort of those really, really fast corners where you get the the aerodynamics of the full fairing super bikes. The, the MT-10's not gonna have that as much, but for the tracks that are located near me, I think it's gonna be perfect, to be honest. I've seen a lot of videos of people taking out to the tracks, and by all accounts, everyone has a ball with the MT-10, particularly the SP, just with that additional uh, suspension adjustment and that sort of thing on the fly. Yeah, so commuting, touring, and hills and track uh, are the reasons I picked the MT-10 um, and the SP version because it's it's, it's going to do everything that I throw at it. I'll take it in the rain, I'll take it in the sun. Thankfully, we don't get snow here, so I don't have to deal with that. But yeah, so it's done about 2,000 k so far, and I guess that's my introductory thoughts to the MT-10 SP. I'd love to know what you think of the MC-10, whether you've got one or you're thinking about getting one or your mate's got one and you've ridden one. I'll be doing a few more videos on the MT, MT-10 uh, as well as probably some vlogging stuff soon. So this is obviously the first video that I'm chucking up on my channel. So if you like the sound of my voice or really like bikes or have an MT-10 or anything like that, feel free to subscribe and hang around and say good day. I'll be back very, very soon. Um, so I'm James, and look, I really appreciate your time. Have a terrific day.